David Young. I have the privilege of serving here at the First Presbyterian Church here in Newton. And my colleague, Reverend Amy Florence, also with us from Andover Presbyterian Church. We're delighted to have the opportunity to, to um, co-labor, as it were, and in sharing uh, this opportunity. After this service, there is also a luncheon, which is in the Fellowship Hall, which is on this side of the building. Um, that wasn't rocket science because that side is church. But anyway, it's on that side of the building. And uh, uh, folks have prepared that for our enjoyment and fellowship. I hope you'll be able to take advantage of that as well. And so glad that we can be here in spite of uh, weather issues and other things uh, notwithstanding. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Frank, as a baptized member of Christ's church, was gathered in among the saints early in life, and his baptism is now complete as we celebrate this service. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Friends, as we receive the gifts of God this day in this service and in our fellowship and in our time, let us also remember that baptism claims us as God's own, and that God will never let us go. So, in that spirit, then let us hear God's holy word from the book of Romans. From the sixth chapter, we hear these words. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Eternal God, we bless you for the great company of all those who have kept the faith, finished their race, and who now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you at this time. Especially we thank you for Frank Schoonover Sr., whom you have now received into your presence. Help us to believe where we have not seen, trusting you to lead us through our years. Bring us at last with all your saints into the joy of your home, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And at this time, we're going to sing hymn number 302. And you may say, it doesn't sound very much like a funeral, a song that I was hear at a funeral. But that was one of Frank's favorite songs. And this is a celebration of his life. So we will sing our dance in the morning together.
like those who show up on your doorstep with a dish in hand, or those who stop by because they know you've been ill. These were the people who my parents talked to all the time. Some of them lived locally, some of them did not. And it was very baffling to me because I couldn't figure out how or when did my parents become so popular. We were by no means rich. We didn't live in a big house. We didn't drive fancy cars. We didn't wear designer label clothes. We lived a rather simple life. In reality, we had exactly what we needed, a roof over our head, food in our bellies, and clothes on our backs. But more important than that, we always knew that our parents loved us, cherished us, and were there to support us in everything that we did. My father often worked two or three jobs because he wanted my mom to be able to stay at home with us while we were in school. And that's a luxury that most families cannot afford. And my dad willingly worked these extra hours because he felt so strongly about it. On the flip side, my mother was not your average stay-at-home mom. She volunteered for everything. She was a den mother for Boy Scouts, a cadet leader for Girl Scouts, a homeroom mother for trips and projects. She was the taxi driver taking us to dance lessons. We were encouraged to participate in sports and extracurricular activities at school, and we all played instruments in the school band. While we were in school, all of us had part-time jobs, which instilled in us a sense of responsibility and a strong work ethic. When Sundays came, we went to church together, and afterwards, we spent the day together as a family. Growing up, our house had an open door policy, and as such, you never knew who was going to be at the house when you got home or who was coming for dinner. Regardless of who it was, it was a family affair and everyone had a job to do. Whether it was entertaining guests, setting the table, helping to cook, or cleaning up afterwards, everyone took part. My parents have been married for 55 years, and I think that the way in which they raised us is a true testament to who they are as individuals. They worked together as partners, leading by example and teaching us exactly what we needed to become responsible adults. I've thought a lot about my dad this week, and although he is no longer here with us physically, whether we realize it or not, each one of us has a piece of him which we will hold forever. For my brother Frank, it is your love of nature and being outdoors that makes you special. You have a kind and gentle heart. You enjoy the simple things in life, like sitting outside on a beautiful spring day, just soaking up the sun's rays while listening to the birds. You are carefree and happy, living in the moment and enjoying the simple pleasures of life, just like Dad would have done. For Terry, it is your stubbornness, which is not always a bad thing, because there are times when we rush to judge and then realize that we are wrong. You are steadfast like a rock. You gather your facts, present your case, stand firm to your